Welcome back. This is Cindy Dole. Hope you're having a great day and a great weekend. Uh, this is Home Wizards, where we talk about ways to help you uh, enjoy the spaces you call home a little bit more, maybe even a lot more. And right now we're going to talk about those spaces outside because, to me, uh, what a great joy it is to uh, enjoy nature and have, whether you have a little bit of a garden or all you have is a windowsill, just to kind of get in touch with that because it, it beautifies your home and it just kind of calms you down and makes for a better life. So with me is a guy who can relate to that, uh, David King. He's all about the garden garden and he uh, helps people become more successful gardeners. So thanks for being here, David. Hey, Cindy. It's great to be back. <laughs> good to have you. So did you have a good gardening Christmas? Well, I yeah. mean, as a, as a professional gardener, as I professional mean, what gardener. do people get you for Christmas that what you don't do already people, have? Well, you know, um, actually, they get me things that are hobbies. Gardening is not a hobby for me. Hobby, you know, hobby is something you don't do at work. I actually was given some cotton and some cotton seeds so I can grow my own cotton. But I was given some cotton to spin. Really? So you can make a thread from the cotton, and, and it's very lovely cotton. And you have to use a special spindle because it has a different fiber. Most spinners that, you, that are around now are into knitting, and so they're doing wool mm-hmm. and animal fur. Not so much cotton. So cotton's a little bit harder to spin, but I'm going to give it a shot because I have two cotton trees in my garden perennial cotton and so we're going to take the cotton and we're going to and we love to teach the kids because you walk up to the tree and you can just pluck out a cotton bowl right and there's the seeds in there and it's, uh-huh. it's really and it really gets you know kids excited because they're wearing jeans and t-shirts and those are cotton and you can see the little furry cotton ball right there right there <laughs> like it came out of a medicine cap <laughs> except that it has seeds in it yeah yeah but boy i mean i don't know how many people might be growing cotton trees not that many i mean but, is that something that's southern california ish it sounds like it's some, something for the south well actually you can grow the cotton here we do have in fact cotton used to be one of our big exports out of california you Who can knew? grow yes, you can grow cotton here. It likes the heat, of course, mm-hmm. but um, the cotton tree is never going to be commercial. It's actually native to Pakistan, India, but the fiber isn't quite as long, so it's harder to spin. But the main thing is, in our culture, we want the cotton out there in the field. We want to move into the field and mow the cotton down, take it all at once, and plant fresh again. Where the cotton tree a little bit comes ripe at different times, so it'd be impossible to harvest it commercially. But if you're interested in something like this for your children or something like that. Oh, it sounds like fun. It's great yeah. fun. I mean, the thing sits out there and it's like, poof, there's a cotton ball. But isn't there a thing called the cotton boll weevil? Or? Well, I don't know as we have it so much in Southern California. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't, I've not had any problems. I always remember with it. hearing about it. Oh, yeah. Well, there's songs about that. It's one of the few insects <laughs> that actually gets a song. Oh, please, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> no, no, <thank> you. <laughs> I don't sing without my guitar, dear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it does sound like a fun family project to, uh, to grow something like that together. It's you know? a nice, well behaved tree. I'm, I might have my own cotton tree, and then I'll give you the the thread to there to deal go. with. Yeah, I'm not yeah, sure I want to spend the time to spin it. I don't know. <laughs> so well, it might be something you know you can give to somebody to keep them out of trouble. You know, like a child. Yeah, you know, so that's think, true. Go, go yeah. spin your cotton. You get them away from the computer, maybe. Yeah. All right. Yep. All right. Your computer privileges are are revoked. Yeah. So we were talking uh, during the break about uh, as we kind of segue now into the new year. There's so much to think about with. Our, our kind of our gardening goals, and then now we take into consideration the rain that we've had, mm-hmm. and we aren't really sure how much rain that we have had. It's been a bit. It's been a bit, and and how is your garden, ha- you know, holding up with it? <laughs> yeah, ha ha ha. Well, <laughs> I garden over at Venice High School at the Learning Garden. Yeah, and we are one of the low points in the neighborhood, and at one point you can see the garden bed sitting above the water in the the pathways become waterlogged and mm-hmm. there's actually water in the pathways so the garden beds are little islands we have little islands out there um we're beginning to dry out but we've got more rain coming i don't know i mm-hmm. mean it's and so it's been kind of hard on the plants we think we've had a few things just kind of wash away there's a large parking lot that drains and the water i've actually seen the water drain from our garden out over the sidewalk and off the curb into Walgrove Avenue as though it were coming off a waterfall. Hmm. It's just, you know, the whole thing is moving right by. I think for my succulents, it's been a bit challenging. Oh, it's, yes. You know, they're kind of getting a little soggy. <laughs> they get a little soggy. And some of them, if they're, if they're not getting enough drainage, they'll just keel over. It's like, yeah. okay, I've had enough of this. All right. Well, help us figure out um, for January and, and the coming ones, what are some good goals just to kind of get – Get our garden together. You okay. know, how should we how should we begin? Well, because it's a fresh slate. A fresh slate. I know. It's like uh, gardeners and baseball players is wait till next year. You know, <laughs> that's the motto. Um, one of the first things that I like to to tell beginning gardeners especially is to keep a log of what you've done. 
and write down because the best book you'll ever read on gardening is the one you wrote. Kind of a dear diary, a almost dear, your blog, yes, right? Dear diary. Yes, exactly. You know, just, you have a great blog. Thank you. I've yeah. got I've got more than one, um, which is crazy. I should have put made one blog, but who was thinking that far ahead? Uh, <laughs> But anyway, I like to look over what we did last year and then begin to plan this year. Mm -hmm. And first think about what you want to eat or what is a high-value crop for you. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things I found out is that uh, uh, shallots are easier to grow than onions. Hmm. And yet when you go to the store, onions are much more expensive than shallots or much less expensive than shallots. So you see, it's like a, a dollar value crop. If you grow shallots, wow, you can go, look, those are $4.99 and I grew a bunch of them and I could pay 60 cents for the whole lot. That's the fun. That's almost like coupon clipping. It's I like, know, look it's what, I yes, what I saved. <laughs> of course, then of course you had to buy the tool. No, never mind. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. But then you want to, you want to plan on what you want to put out. Okay. Now I like, I like to start with seeds. Because you get so much more um, variety from seeds. You know, if I, if I look at seeds, I get to choice of five or six different shallots, for example. Whereas if I look at um, uh, bulbs or plants, I only get one or two. So I like to look at seeds. And, and there's more uh, room for error, too, right? There's more room for error. That's true. That is true. But when you've watched a seed come up, you go, gosh. You know, you put the seed of a broccoli in there and then you eat a broccoli. It's like, oh, my gosh. It's your little baby. It's my baby. I know, all the way through. Yeah. It's great. You have to go out and talk to the seeds. Go out and talk to it. Well, <laughs> we do that anyway, you know. Yeah, you know, do you? We, we do. Oh, sure, sure, sure. You better straighten up and grow or you're gone. <laughs> um, so by February, you really want to be in, in ready to go. And I would lay down a lot of compost or uh, any kind of mulch, any kind of organic matter. If you don't have compost, go to the store and buy anything that's organic matter, whatever's on sale. It doesn't really matter that much. And I don't dig it in. I lay it on top of the soil. I leave it down there on top of the soil and come back in about two weeks and begin to plant. Uh, the reason I leave it on top of the soil is because I've got worms. And the worms come up and they bring this stuff up and down. They, and they aerate the soil for me so I don't do any digging. I have a bad back. I'm not going to go out there and hurt my back any further. So we let the worms do the job for us. You mean you let them crawl in yeah, and the, crawl out? Yeah, the worms crawl. Well, they come up from the ground, <laughs> right? They right? go up they and they crawl take stuff and, and they crawl back down yeah, again. And yeah. each time they do that, they make holes, aeration holes in your garden. Uh, I, and you didn't add the worms. They're just there. No, they're there. Ready for business. You bring on, you bring on any kind of uh, organic matter. Mm -hmm. They're there. And the thing, neat thing of it is, is I always think of it, I tell people that, that we have enough unemployment. Don't make the worms unemployed, too. Oh, jeez. You know? Give them a job. That's what they're there for. So they do all that work for me, saves my back, and then I come out in two weeks later, three weeks later, whatever I've got time for, and I begin to put my my plants or my seeds in. Okay. One cute little note is most beans, you want to grow green beans or yellow beans, Yeah. they don't like cold, water, uh, cold uh, weather. They don't like cold soil. You really need to wait until uh, late March, early April to plant any of those out. But the purple varieties, royal purple pot or whatever the, you get, mm -hmm. purple beans, they will t t um, germinate in wet soil. And the cool thing is, especially for beginning cooks, when you put them in the steamer, when they're done, they turn green. Really? Yeah, nice, deep, dark fun. green. Oh, that sounds pretty. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. And when they turn green, they're actually kind of al dente, right, which I like. And that's a good way to, to learn. If you time that, how long it takes it to get to turn to al dente, right? Mm -hmm, You've mm -hmm. got it. That's your cue. Huh? That's your cue. So if we are thinking about planting some seeds and, and planning to plant our um, our veggies and whatnot between now and February, I mean, really, is is the sky the limit in Southern California, or just certain ones for the winter? Well, yeah. The, the main consideration here is that we can only do broccoli, cabbage, uh, root crops, and lettuces in winter. Those, the leafies and the roots, right, will not take the heat for so much. You can probably get by with some beets on into summertime. Love a good beet salad. I do, too. Oh, mm, yeah. Goat cheese. Have you ever tried golden beets? I have. Those are delicious. I mean, I haven't tried growing them, but I, I love to eat, you oh. know, have them in the restaurant. Oh, yes. they're yummy. They're delicious. Are those the, difficult to grow? No. no? They, they tend to not have a, as good a germination as the red ones. So you just plant a couple extra seeds. That's all. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about that is you can work with children with them, and they won't stain everything. You know, when you work with red beets, everybody gets red, everything gets red, and it's hard to get out. Mm -hmm. The golden beets don't bleed. So in terms of spacing out the seeds, because I think a lot of people are trying to visualize, okay, well, how much land do I really have for my little veggie garden? And right. then should you try to, you know, protect it from, 
critters that might come and, and munch and crunch, right? I right. mean, what about the birds that might come and get the seeds before they've had a chance to for the worms to do the, the help or whatever? Right. So, I mean, how much space do we need, and then how do we protect that space? Well, in my book, No Space is Enough, I was uh, ordering seeds, and I was uh, – postulating to the the teacher in the in the garden who teaches at the horticulture classes for the high school i was wondering if we could knock down the nearest building so we ah. could use that land too there's never enough especially when you're looking at seeds because you go through the seed catalog and you go oh, i gotta have that gotta have that gotta have that and pretty soon you've got 100 bucks worth of seeds and you need you know four or five acres to plant them all um so the minimum well any any size you can plant a you can plant seeds in a large pot mm-hmm. you could put like you know uh, uh let's see here you could put peppers. Peppers go great in pots. Tomatoes. Le- lettuce, peppers, and tomatoes in one container. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a big one. A big one. A big one. But that's fine. It's fine to plant more than one type of plant because the different types of plants, like lettuce, for example, as you named, a lettuce plant has very shallow roots. I'm illustrating this for the radio. No, this is, is this? great. I, I can see it. I can see it, yeah. Yeah, you have the, so the very shallow six, roots. So it's about five to six inches yeah, or so. for lettuce, right? Okay. A pepper plant's going to have roots more About like, a foot and a half. About a foot and a half. Tomato even bigger. Tomato, probably a minimum, unless you have a smaller variety of tomato, a a typical tomato plant, I'd say two feet minimum. But there are small tomato plants that are made for pots. Tiny Tom is one of them, which is a great name, Tommy Tiny Tom. That is cute. Yeah. (laughs) Doesn't play the... uh, the, uh, Tiny Tim. Yeah, Yeah, doesn't doesn't play the ukulele. ukulele. Yeah, right. (laughs) (laughs) Listening to Home Wizard, Cindy Dole here. We're talking with David King about getting uh, your garden ready for for the winter, and we're starting off with just getting some veggies, and why not start with seeds? Um, And, uh, I mean, the lettuce, the tomato. What about onions, red onions? Red onions. You named one of my favorites. I love red onions. Well, there's a great, it's long of tropia, or it's also known as Italian torpedo. Mm-hmm. It is a red onion, and it's it's a yay long. What's that? Four inches, five mm-hmm. inches, and it's more. It's shaped like a tube. Uh huh. More like a zucchini. Yeah, with a bulging middle. Okay. And those we've grown always. Uh, the first time I planted them, people looked at them. They look kind of weird because they sit out of the ground. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. then we started eating them. And by the time we got down to the last one, people were ready to fight for it. You throw them on the grill. Right. Mm. And, oh, I'm beginning to drool now. They're so <laughs> sweet. But so we can good. grow the seeds for red onions now? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Look for that yellow. You look at that red, okay. uh, red long of tropia. That's from Seed Savers Exchange. Or uh, other companies call it um, Italian red torpedo. Mm. All right. When we come back, uh, more talk with David King. Uh, things to do for your garden in the winter time. And speaking of seeds, David, did you know that, you know, back to the Rose Parade, the floats that have a lot of seeds applied right away, the birds come in and try to nibble on them. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, they come back every year because they know at these float barns, they got some food. It's like a soup plantation. Yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're coming back. More fun with David King. And maybe you have a gardening question. Feel free to call in at 888-KFWB980. Cindy Dole, the fun continues with Home Wizards on KFWB News Talk 980. <laughs> Welcome back. Home Wizard Cindy Dole here. And so glad you're spending part of your Saturday with us because we're having fun talking about ways to put a smile on your face, to enjoy the spaces you call home, whether it's a big, full-blown remodeling project or just something as simple as getting some seeds and planting some Red onions. <laughs> so we're talking with a gardening coach and expert. You probably have heard him here on the show before, David King. And tell us about the classes you have coming up because you've got a bunch of good ones. We've got a bunch of very interesting things yeah. happening. The uh, Learning Garden over at Venice High School, uh, we have uh, a seminar on the 29th of January called Essentials of Vegetable Seed Saving. This is a great new project we've introduced called SLOLA, the Seed Library of Los Angeles. The seed library would be a place where you can go, if you're a member, you go and you check out mm-hmm. a packet of seed, let's no. say. No. Yeah. Like you, you're checking out a book? Exactly. That's the whole concept. Oh, wait a minute. Yes. But you have to return it. Yes. So what you do is you check out, let's say, a package of, let's say you have enough space and you can grow some corn. You come and you grow, some, you get um, eh, three or four ounces of uh, golden bantam corn. Uh-huh. You take that home, you plant it. One of the tree, one of the plants, trees, one of the plants, you know, <laughs> they aren't that big. One of the plants you let go to seed. You let the you let the corn stay on the plant until it gets hard. 
then you bring it back, oh. and that and that is your checking back in your book. What a great recycling effort, huh? It is a I wonderful. Mean, it's like it goes full circle, doesn't it? It really does. Isn't that this neat? is the the value in this? There's several values. One is we we ensure a low cost seed supply for people who are economically challenged. Yep. And that's one of the that's one of the major considerations of the seed library. The second thing is that we have over years the seeds will begin to adapt a little bit more to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And this same population of seeds will be put out again and again and again. And everybody growing it out to seed, every time it comes back, it's going to be a little bit more adapted to L.A., the L.A. soils, the L.A. climate. So we're developing, for instance, in about five or six years, we could say we have the Los Angeles Golden Bantam. Corn. So we're creating natives, aren't we're creating we? Isn't a, that native to the place? Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Very what exciting. A, that is really a beautiful idea. And in the final analysis, we also learned that we don't have to depend on companies mm -hmm. to feed us. We don't have to. We we have our own Wait a source minute. of seeds. I have to have my Starbucks or my coffee bean. The uh, dower. You're not going to have. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> We, Unless you can help me with that. I don't know. Can you help ask, me with that? We ask people, what <laughs> seeds do you want us to save? And somebody goes, coffee. Yeah. I, go, I don't think so. Or chocolate. I mean, chocolate yeah, seeds. Yeah. 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 I know. But boy, isn't that a great concept? So again, repeat that. We can get seeds. Check them out from the library. When do we start doing this? Now? Well, that isn't quite ready yet. Not we've yet. got the... What so it's we, a new thing. It's a brand new thing. We had our own. We've only had one meeting of the general membership. Mm -hmm. We're going to have another meeting on the 15th at the Learning Garden, which is located at the corner of Walgrove Avenue and Venice Boulevard. Mm -hmm. People are invited to come out and join in and put in their input into how we're going to organize this thing. We're going to save seeds. We're going to have computer uh, uh, that will inventory the seeds and make sure that everything is grown as best as we can. We're going to disseminate the information on how to do this, and everybody's going to subscribe to these, these uh, best practices. Mm-hmm. All right. So then we will have probably by March, April, we'll have the rudimentary seed bank in place. And I'm thinking, you know, just the common seeds that people will give us. I know, for example, the Learning Garden itself will give over uh, Christmas lima beans. This is a great lima bean with red and white. That's why it's called Christmas, because it's red yeah. and white. And it's a fantastic producer, great bean. So we'll have those, I know, for for um for the library, and there's one. Oh, fava beans. We'll have fava oh, beans. Oh, no, not fava beans. Fava beans. <laughs> but things like that, and we're going to put them in the library, and people can check them out. They'll check out a certain number of grams because you don't need that many, uh -huh. right? And then you'll bring back that amount of grams. This is so cool. Is anyone else doing this anywhere else in the country? Oh, this is very, this is going to, this is cutting edge. It but, totally sounds like this is going to put. Put L.A. on the map. I mean, we already are, but this we, is we are, great. Right. Well, uh, San Francisco, unfortunately, has beat us to the punch. Mm. They've got about three or four libraries up there, mm -hmm. including the Richmond area library, which is so wonderful. They teach. They're willing to teach us how to do what we're doing. And uh, and it's there's there's a couple of seed libraries that have been established for a while, but we really do intend to be the seed library for Los Angeles. We intend to to not just be for Venice. We really want to reach out and uh, get seeds to the inner city mm -hmm. and other gardeners. You know, it, we want everybody to be, have this opportunity. I'm guessing that you probably will accept donations of seeds. <gasps> Oh, gosh. Let's think. Would, would I take a donation? <laughs> yes. Yes, of Donations course. of seeds, donations of money, donations of time. <laughs> so if people wanted to check it out, what's what's the website or where your blog? Right now. people can find it. Yeah, right now they just have, we just have the blog up. We eventually will have S-L-O-L-A dot org. We have, we own the site, but mm -hmm. we haven't got it up yet. Right now it's S-L-O-L-A dot blogspot dot com. Okay. Slola. Slola. Seed like, Library of Los Angeles. Like Lola, but Slola. Well, actually, we thought more of in slow food. Yeah. Slow. Slow Patience. LA. Nourishing seeds and yes. helping to feed people. That sounds so cool. Yeah. Well, when we come back, uh, we're going to talk more about um, some of the other edibles like fruit trees yes. and uh, why it's been the rain and my container uh, citrus trees have been saying, okay, enough already. I get it that you like to have rain, but I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, they're hurting for certain. Talking with David King, who's got some great um, veggie and edible gardening tips for you and winter gardening tips. Home Wizard, Cindy Dole. Hope you're having fun because we are. and We're not done yet. We're just getting started. Oh, 
Oh, you're good. Come, come on, do that again. Roll it down the river. <laughs> it's not my key. See, Seth Benderup is uh, is our uh, music musician tonight or today because uh, I was just so busy, and we love our Home Wizards tunes. So, Seth, thank you for finding the best of Home Wizards tunes. Hopefully available at some time uh, somewhere near you. The CDs. You picked them initially. These are just, you know, my favorite. Seth is our guy. He makes all the uh, the magic come together here, pushing those buttons, keeping us on the air, listening to Home Wizards, and I'm Cindy Dolan. David King was doing a little singing there, and I guess you like to sing while you garden, huh? Well, I can, yes, I yeah. I sing a lot. Yeah, I, I bet you do. Well, Usually when nobody's listening, but... Well, I figured, you know what, even if it's off-key, it's better than, than not singing at all. Or at I like least, that. you know, you got a happy spirit going on, yes. right? As long as it isn't offending other people's ears too much, but anyway... <laughs> Uh, we want to talk a few more moments about edible things because that is really up your alley. And, and what is going on with my citrus trees and, and all the rain? Is there anything I can do to make sure they aren't going to die? Because it seems like it's almost smothered them. Too much rain. Well, make sure there's no water pooling at the bottom, right? Mm-hmm. For instance, you don't have them in, um, in the contain- saucers. No, they're not in saucers. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of drainage. And, and yeah. yeah. I would be also... Tip them? Tip them a little bit just mm-hmm. to make sure. If there's any standing water in them at all, like you see water on the top, tip yeah. them all the way over. Right. You can always ride them back up when they've dried out a little bit. But tip them all the way over so that water drains off the top. Yeah. Right. And also they won't add any more water while they're leaning, while they're laying over. Right. They're, the rain will just hit the side of the that's true. container. I mean, I guess we might get some more. And our ficus trees, even though it's not an edible, but uh, we have these great, huge ficus trees in containers by our entryway. Mm-hmm. And with all the rain, I mean, they were just hanging over. <laughs> it looked like they were dying, but it's just because there's so much moisture. It's just heavy on those poor branches and leaves. Right. Well, I would tell you the ficus trees in my book are almost weed trees. Yeah. And they won't die. They really won't. In fact, it's hard to kill them. But... Uh, that that tree right there, uh, all your trees in pots, actually, though, are getting too much water. And typically, if that water stays on them, the roots will begin to rot. Uh-uh-uh. Right. Okay, we don't want that. So, no. we need to, so we need to basically go to all of our containers and tip them on the side. If you have that much water in them. And you can okay. stick your finger in there. And if it's really soggy. Do you know how many containers I have on our okay, garden? Okay, that's a lot of finger sticking, huh? We, well, we have about, <laughs> I think my husband counted one time. It's oh, it's upwards of 200 plus. That's a lot of tilting, too. I, I, so. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I wouldn't worry too much about the ficus trees, but yeah. your, your citrus. And by the way, a lot of your citrus nowadays will be showing yellow on the leaves. Yes, don't right. worry about that. Don't worry about that. That's okay. uh, that's common. In fact, if you notice, it almost happens every year. Mm-hmm. It is the fact that it's cold, and nitrogen moves very slowly or very poorly in cold soil. As a consequence, those trees don't get enough nitrogen. So I would take a little bit of nitrogen fertilizer and lightly fertilize the trees in the pots. Lightly. Lightly. Gingerly. I'm big about lightly. Yeah. I'm big about lightly. I think that, you know, a lot of the, pre- the recommendations on fertilizers is to sell fertilizer, more fertilizer. Oh, uh, okay. So just go back lightly. It's okay. And they'll green right up. Talk about uh, the Victory Garden stuff that you have going on. Well, the Victory Garden is a wonderful new initiative from the University of California statewide uh, extension, uh-huh. uh, cooperative extension. Yvonne Savio is the head of that, and the Master Gardeners. They train Master Gardeners, and now they've gone in for a series started last year called the Victory Gardens. It's like four weeks, real intense beginning gardening. And the people that graduate from those those courses get a little certificate and get a chance to go out and, and garden, and they have all the rudimentary knowledge they need to start a garden. What we've just discussed this morning was the chance to have intermediate uh, courses in uh, uh, vegetable gardening, where we would touch on different uh, courses, different um, different concepts that you didn't get in the beginning, mm-hmm. right? For example, some of the things we're going to talk about is California natives, uh, permaculture, um, and companion planting. We're actually going to do a bit on grafting, seed saving, propagation, and what to do once you get the harvest in. Uh, and if you're listening, if a, a gardener who's listening right now, or maybe a wannabe gardener, only could get one word from you to to feel some encouragement. What would you say to this year do blank in the garden and keep it clean? <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I didn't know you could read my mind so quickly. <laughs> well, I do think I think that the thing to do. You know what I would do in the you garden. You only have a few seconds. About five seconds. Put Just a quick, chair. 
Get a chair. I knew you were going to say this. Put a chair. And sit in the garden. Sit in the garden. And, Be there. And, and and see what the garden needs and wants, right? Make it and a really, part of your life. Love it. Thank you so much, David <laughs> King. And I can't wait to see that seed library. It's going to become into life. We're going to shoot a video on that, I promise. Excellent. All right. Coming up next, we're going to stay in the garden. We're going to talk about keeping it native. California natives, maybe you've been thinking about saving water, even though we have so much here now. <laughs> we're going to need to save more throughout the year. You're listening to Home Wizards. Let's kick it up a notch, Seth, because Hour 2 is underway. 